Basically, um, we're very, very enthusiastic about technology, te technological development and enhancements, but at the same time developing a very sustainable impact and social impact in the society of today. So let's look at the aging society. It's a very pressing global issue and everybody talks about it. And it's unbelievable how um, Hong Kong actually in 2040, 30% um, of Hong Kong will be 65 and above. And Hong Kong is by far the leading population in the world. However, everybody else, I'm from Germany, for example, and in Germany, this is an issue also. So it's, in glo it's a global problem that we're facing, right? Um, also, healthcare spending will increase per capita. Now let's look at aging, the aging society and the issues they're facing. So aging society, aging, is it necessarily bad or is it dangerous? After doing some research, it is very evident that it is dangerous and it is becoming more dangerous as we speak. So there are three major concerns we're facing, and one is posture, the other one is falling, and then also dementia and Alzheimer's and other diseases as such. So posture is a main problem because bad posture is the main cause for falls globally. And also bad posture could restrict blood from flowing through your body precisely and could lead to heart attacks, could lead to strokes, potentially to death. Falling is responsible for the most um, injury-related deaths in the world globally. And Southeast Asia, um, Hong Kong, etc., are like the number one um, country or the number one area in the world that are actually facing this issue. So actually an immediate response is essential to actually overcome those issues. Um, dementia is also very, um, it's very, uh, yeah, very, very, very evident in today's society. Um, and because if we, we researched and we could see that every three seconds, one person is diagnosed worldwide by dementia. And the problem hereby is that six out of 10 people that are familiar with the place still get lost in familiar places. And we're trying to overcome that. Okay, thank you, Kevin. And our purpose is basically to create a better and safer everyday environment for the aging population based on our technologies. And uh, we will do so through our USP, which is that we believe uh, people should not act upon technologies, the tech should act upon people. Therefore, I present you YSO, the smart inso based on AI and IoT. And um, this is the prototype of YSO here, everybody can see it here. And they have a piece of hardware inside, which includes uh, multiple uh, pressure sensors inside, and multiple motion tracking sensors, and the wireless charging module, which will allow to detect key uh, much more easier way. And also, why so have uh, AI algorithms inside that can immediately detect abnormal behaviors of the elderly, like falling on the ground, and, um, and notify the caregivers instantly using the wireless transmission module. And uh, the GPS and SIM card module of YSO can, can
can can um, can help keeping the eyes on the uh, on the dementia elderly from uh, from getting lost. And also, besides the hardware, we also have a, have a, a YSO mobile app that allows the user to visualize the data and receive our daily uh, health recommendations and uh, warning signals to improve their lifestyle and to keep them safe. Thanks. Okay, so this is a short video. You can see this short video that I record using this kind of a prototype. And you can see it can detect whether I'm walking or standing or sitting carefully. And this is the graph that I bought using this kind of a prototype. And, um, uh, and as you can see, each movement, like sit, stand, lean, walk here, can be, um, have a clear, clear pattern here. And then our algorithms will automatically recognize those kind of patterns and then provide services based on them. Next. Okay. So there are some, um, some similar product on the market right now, like the smart watches, Apple Watch, or the smart shoes, or the famous Ping Wanzhong. Next. So, uh, compared with those products, our product have uh, four major advantages. First of all, it's a, the, the usability of our product is for everyone, uh, because everyone can enjoy the benefits from WISO. Next. And, w and, and then whenever uh, in, any emergency happens to the users, the data will be transmitted to the, to the linked phone instantly. And, and next one is, there's no need for any actions uh, from the users to access our services because it's a self-acting technology. And the last but not least, one of the important uniqueness of WISO is that it can uh, measure your, uh, your step length while you're walking, which allows for a better pre-detection of a lot of uh, diseases. Okay, so next will be... So actually, you need to understand our main stakeholders is are the elderly, right? But our main customers are actually the next generation, the caretakers and the insurances. So our um, growth strategy looks like the following. Now we're at the stage of the B2B market, so we uh, collaborate with institutions to um, develop or de improve our product. At the later stage, we actually launch the product for the end customer in the B2C market, and uh, we actually sell our product. And uh, in the future, we can use the data to um, improve our algorithms. So this is the development plan. We are now at step one, where we are at the fundraising, patent application, and company incorporation, uh, where we have, uh, actually rely on the help of Hong Kong SAC, Hong Kong Technology and Science Park, and uh, of course other institutions. At the second step, we are in the R&D, where we already have a uh, um, commitment from HEX, which is the largest hardware incub incubator in the world to help us. And then we do the clinical trials, and after that we start with the mass production and the marketing and promotion. So actually our goal is to launch the product within one year, so from, uh, from now on. So just to tell you how we did it, uh, for example, this is the elderly home we worked together. We did a survey uh, to understand what the elderly actually need. And, um, and they gave us a lot of insights uh, how we can develop and improve our product and we want to do this actually in the future with uh, other institutions hospitals and elderly homes hello uh, hi let's talk about the numbers now we aim to offer monthly subscriptions uh, to uh, users as it will be easy and convenient for them to make payments we aim to target hospitals elderly homes and insurances as these are these organizations have the highest interaction with the elderly people after we have exp enough experience and data uh, from running Visol, we e uh, aim to incorporate it with existing health uh, tracking apps. So our main cost in the first two years would be manufacturing, salaries for some engineers and data scientists, and uh, the clinical trials in R&D. So let's talk about the Hong Kong market. Hong Kong is, uh, has a population of 7.5 million people, uh, with uh, people above 60 around 22%, and people above, uh, and people above 60 living alone is around 17%. That is our target. Those are our target users for Visol. And some of the operations, we need, we need to hire engineers and uh, data scientists so we can analyze data better and design algorithms to make the uh, product even better. And as we understand uh, uh, the, the need to um, make the product even better, we need to invest heavily in R&D in, uh, initially as well. So the, the prototype cost is $400, but with mass production, we can bring it down to $200 uh, Hong Kong per unit. And we aim to sell it for $200 uh, Hong Kong dollars per month uh, on a subscription basis. Uh, the setup cost in the first three months of the business would be around 600,000 Hong Kong dollars, excluding the manufacturing cost. And we aim to be profit. Uh, we aim uh, to see the first profitable month in the 11th uh, month. Time's up. Thank you for your presentation. 
I want to understand more about your algorithm. How does it actually work? Because you mentioned about you that you have the pro very nice prototype here with a lot of electronic stuff yes. glued together, but I'm not too sure if it actually works. Okay, for uh, actually, uh, if you see this uh, piece of hardware, uh, it, it have uh, four pressure sensors and motion tracking sensors, and these sensors can get you data. And for the data, if we get a lot of data, then we can train the train the computer using algorithms of how to predict some kind of disease like a photon detection or the health recommendation. Right. Yeah. Who in the team has the expertise on this? I, I have the expertise of, uh, of AI algorithms. Yeah. Your background is medical uh, background or en engineering, right? Engineer, yeah, of course. Does it actively uh, emit um, signals, or it hasn't got a battery inside? Or? They have a battery inside. I see. Actually, if you can see, this is a very little battery, the uh, lithium so battery, battery inside. inside. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. The, uh, how long will it last? Well, the battery right now can can last for two days, but our uh, the second R and D stage, we will just uh, elongate it to. I hope to long to uh, one week because one week would be much better. And also, it have a wireless charging module. So if two days is also enough because you don't need to put, put your insole out for charging. You, you just put the shoes on some uh, charging board and they can uh, uh, charging while, while you sleep. So you can see this is the coil right. for wireless charging. If you're using it for demented people, I mean, someone has to mm -hmm. remember to recharge. Uh, well, that yes, this is a very big problem. Thank you very much. But I think if we put the charging board, charging board uh, beneath uh, near the bed, then yeah, actually so it's okay for automatic. just uh, put the yeah automatically charge. Yeah. Uh, I think basically we have a lot of questions about uh, the features of your product. Mm -hmm. um, but first of all, um, have you gone through uh, some sort of proof of concept and? Uh, Obviously, I want to understand more about uh, your product comparing with the smart shoes that you have highlighted earlier. How user-friendly of your product will be for you know, the end user? Yeah, two questions. Thank you. Okay, uh, first of all, for the smart shoes, actually right now there are a lot of smart shoes in, for example, Nike or Adidas, but those smart shoes are basically for the athletes, the sportsmen, the sporties, but not for elderly. Because the problem is the elderly might not want to, uh, for example, in home, the elderly might wear, might wear slippers, but not shoes, so the shoes is not suitable for them. But for us, well, you can see this is an insole, right? But the core is this piece of hardware and our algorithm. So actually, we can insert this kind of hardware inside the slipper, so can make this uh, like a smart slipper. So, and uh, maybe add the, 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 uh, the waterproof function, then we can make sure that the elderly, all, all our grandmas, grandpas, can, um, uh, can use the, this technology in their home. So. This is the, the question of proof of concept. Okay, uh, I think this product is the proof of concept uh, product and I could just show you a video that it's just uh, w w what I record using this uh, uh, prototype. So I think the concept is uh, kind of improved. Any institution who have already tried oh, oh, okay, and sorry, give sorry. a kind of um, okay, I know what you mean. and proof of concept that okay. works. Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't That's understand. Okay. okay, sorry, I don't, I don't you mean now. Uh, actually, I have to tell you the truth that there's no institution use that, but I show it to the Hong Kong CHK uh, Jockey Club of Aging Institution of CHK, and uh, I, I sent out some questionnaires to them, and they said that they are they want to test after we pass our first R&D stage because actually. For this one, it's only a prototype, so it's, um, we need to pass to the first R&D state to, to have a sample production, and then we can use this to for the um, for the clinical trial for the proof. Yeah. So can I, uh, just to elaborate a little bit further, actually, we want to. The thing is, the way uh, the, uh, the reason why we also here we actually need some funding to do the development a little bit further, improvement, and then we are trying to work with some institutions in Hong Kong, such as hospitals and elderly homes. And of course, we would also like to work with a physiotherapist to improve uh, the posture, uh, the part of it. And then uh, we, that's why uh, what I was mentioning at the first stage, the B2B market, where we want to do the, the testing and the trials. Thank you. Now, can you elaborate a little bit more about your, even your in, when you have all this kind of verification of your concept, uh, you, have, you might have done a kind of uh, repeated testing of the reliability of your product and how you justify your product's reliability because every step may also influence your, um, you know, uh, 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 
the IC uh, pack, and uh, and then um, I think secondly, how um, uh, your this reliability uh, affect um, you know the future development of your product. Okay, thank you very much. This is a very good uh, question. Sorry, uh, I, I yeah. should add one more thing: is how yeah. your algorithm will adjust uh, by itself the bound the posture of individual um, uh, user because uh, different ways, different uh, posture, different motion. How your algorithm can you know uh, react with this kind of um, uh, situation? Actually, that depends on how many data we can get. For example, how many clinical trials we can pass through. And I want to briefly introduce about our development plan here. And right now, actually, we are because we are uh, all full-time MBA students. So right now, the first phase, just uh, Sandro said, we are on the fund fundraising phase. And after we graduate at August, August this year or July this year, we will uh, start our first R&D stage. And then in uh, about October. We will have uh, about uh, August to September, the two months we will spend on some mini batch samples. And to, to uh, for example, like uh, 10 or 12 uh, pair of shoes, and then we can use them to get the data, what, what you're talking about, and, and, and design algorithms. And uh, to further that, after that, yes, after August, uh, September here, we will go to the clinical trials just to invite some elderly from like this institution or other elderly homes in Hong Kong, and then and then to op to optimize and to add new features or new functions of WISO in here, and um, uh, in here, uh, yeah, of course we will uh, optimize every the like the algorithms, and the data modeling, the software, hardware, anything of it, and then after around January next year, we will uh, we think we will uh, finish every optimization and we'll start the mass production here. And after the long mass production, I think uh, in the next year today, March, next year, we will have product. We'll have mass, pro mass production product on the, on the market right now. S uh, now. So I think um, we will spend the whole year for the optimization, for collect more data and to, uh, to, to design more algorithms of it. So this is our plan. Um, be interested to know why, why you looked at Ping Onzong as your yes. competitor. Yes, uh, thank you. Maybe, maybe your analysis is different <laughs> from mine, but you know, please tell me. I understand, why. understand. Okay, uh, my understand is that I, uh, I know Ping Onzong have uh, one function is that they have a button in, uh, as a necklet here, and when, for example, the elderly fall down or have emergencies, the elderly will just press the button. But uh, what actually Ping Onzong is a very good market, very good product on the, on, on the market right now. I agree with that. But a little, pro a little uh, problem is that if the, uh, the elderly is dementia or just um, lost when they uh, fall down, the, the problem is they, he, he or she might cannot uh, press the button himself. So I think of this idea to you know, use the automatically algorithms to, um, to automatically detect whether if he or she, the elderly, have the emergencies. So this is uh, a big difference, I think. The, th the thing is, um, so basically, if you look at the functionalities of our product, there's a whole bunch of different ones. So for each functionality, there's, there's not really one product that covers all functionalities. However, um, our product has three different main functionalities, and they have three different competitors for each functionality yes. in terms of um, the elderly population. So that's, why, that's how we kind of split it up. Sure. Okay. Have you done any uh, what with an external expert opinion and comment about your product? Yes, uh, of, of course this. This is the questionnaire we did. Uh, there are um, near 20 um, elderly from this, from this institution that's come in our product. And uh, we also went to Hong Kong uh, Science and Technology yes, Park. Yes, we yes. actually had a meeting with them. And uh, they gave us some tips and hints how we could improve. And they offered us to do the, the, the kind of integrated And we're program. also applying for the fund in Hong Kong Science Park. Yeah. And one more. When we, we had a... Um, study trip in San Francisco and we had a cool um, we had like a Shark Tank presentation with the same product there and I met a guy um, which is actually from Hex Growth that will support us in the second R&D phase and um, he collaborates with Sen Thank you judges and Weissel